On day one, I spawned into the Baobab savanna as the mighty electric tiger. Well, at least a baby version of an electric tiger. But if I work hard and train, I can live fully up to my electric tiger potential. Oh no you won't. I looked in front of me and saw a massive, hulking squall golem thundering towards me. He was so much bigger than me, the size difference was terrifying. Listen, mister, I don't want any trouble. I'm Zozo, what's your name? My name's Mike, and I'm here to fight. But why? That doesn't even rhyme. Yes, it does. If I say it rhymes, it rhymes. I'm the strongest creature in the world. Nothing challenges me anymore. And the only way to relieve the boredom is getting into fights with anyone I can. But... No buts, weakling. Or I'll kick yours. Here's the deal. I'm gonna give you a hundred days. You better use them well, kid, and get as strong as possible. Strong enough to have an interesting fight with me. Cause if you don't, I'm gonna find you and pound you until you're nothing more than a little electric tiger stain in the floor. Now run. Mike the Squall Golem didn't have to tell me twice. I turned and ran away as quickly as possible, while Mike just laughed at me. He seemed like my most formidable opponent yet. 100 days, I need to get real strong in that time, or Mike really is gonna destroy me. On day two, I continued running through the Baobab savanna, not stopping until I was confident that Mike the Squall Golem was nowhere to be seen. Phew, that was a close one. If he'd attacked me in that state, I would have been a goner. I only have 10 hearts. I wonder if I have any special abilities. Without even realizing I could, I released a blast of electrical energy from my paw. The electricity is eliminated from me and charges up the air around me. That must have been one of my basic electric tiger abilities. Whoa, maybe I'm not as helpless as I thought. Wait, do I see a pear tree there? I should grab one. I grabbed a few pears and ate them. Even if my hunger was full, I just couldn't resist it. Things were looking up already. At least I wasn't gonna be hungry. But my contentment didn't last for long. A scary plant-like whisperer rustled its way towards me. It wasn't as big as Mike, but it was definitely freaky. Oh no, I have a feeling I know who you work for. You feel correctly, Zozo. You really think you can beat Mike? He's the GOAT. GOAT? He's a squall golem. No, GOAT is an acronym. He is the greatest of all time. G-O-A-T. And that's why you've got no hope against him. Then why even bother coming after me? I didn't even want to fight. I'm gonna destroy you myself to save Mike his time. As the Whisperer approached me, I fired my energy blast, but it didn't even slow him down. All I could do was run away, knowing that even with my energy blast, I had no hope of fighting him. I was hiding behind a small clutch of trees, when suddenly, a wind collar teleported in front of me. Come with me if you want to live. Sure, let's go. I'll follow you. Wow, people normally have questions. Huh, let's go. The wind collar ran off, and I followed him without question, happy to finally have someone on my side. On day three, I continued following the wind collar deeper into the Baobab savanna. He seemed to have confidence and power. It definitely made me feel safer around him. I've been waiting for you to arrive, Zozo. You have no idea how many people have anticipated this special day. Special? This doesn't feel that special. Aside from you saving my life from all the weird creeps who have been trying to attack me. Those weird creeps, as you aptly put it, have been bothering people for quite some time. But if you stick with me and my allies, we might be able to change that together. The wind collar led me to a small shack, leaving me to talk to its inhabitant, a mysterious figure called the Illusioner. So, you are the one the wind collar selected, hmm? You don't appear all that strong, but perhaps that will change. I still don't understand what's happening here. Who are all of you people? And what does any of this have to do with me or that nasty squaggle on Mike? Wind Color and I are just two members of a secret group called the Order of the Shield. For years we have made it our purpose to find and train a champion capable of destroying Mike and ending his reign of terror. If you accept this responsibility, we will do all we can to help you realize your destiny. Well, seeing as Mike is gonna come after me anyway, I agree to working with you. Good. Go with Wind Color. There is no time to waste. You must get strong enough to defeat Mike once and for all. From day four to day five, the Wind Color and I went deeper into the Baobab savanna. We didn't stop until we found an area that was big and flat enough to start constructing a base. First, I knocked down a tree and used its resources to construct a wooden pickaxe. I then mined into the ground and collected enough stone to create my first set of real tools, a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. 
From there, I gathered more stone and granite and made a basic base with a bed for myself and another one for the wind color to stay in with me. You've done great work here, Zozo. You show promise. With time, you will become a great warrior, capable of taking on Mike and showing him what we are all capable of. I want to get stronger, Windcaller, but I'm not sure where to start. How can I become more powerful? I can help you with that, Zozo. I'll give you a portion of my power, and that will give you a foundation to build on. Stay still, please. The wind collar fired an energy blast at me. The second it hit me, I started growing, becoming bigger, and had the ability to summon lightning strikes. I tried it out on some grass, and it was fantastic. Wow, I'm really starting to live up to my electric tiger name now. From day six to day eight, I decided to explore a new part of the savanna and test out my new powers for real. Energy blasts and lightning strikes, I'm a force to be reckoned with. And those powers would soon come in handy because I saw an innocent fungus thrower being attacked by that nasty whisperer who had attacked me earlier. I'm not gonna let this stand. As I ran in, the whisperer's attention was turned to me and the fungus thrower was able to escape. It was just me and my old enemy now. Hey, you ugly plant. You again? I didn't expect to see you after you ran off like a coward last time. I'm no coward whisperer and I'm about to prove it. Talk is cheap, tiger boy. Let's go. I unleashed a powerful lightning strike on the Whisperer, and this time it was completely destroyed. My electric tiger powers were coming in clutch already. Yo, fungus thrower, it's safe to come out now. I'm friendly, I promise. When I found him on the beach, the poor lad was shivering from fear. Dude, that was scary, but also amazing. I thought I was a goner, and then you came in like a superhero, like bam, zow, kapow. It was awesome. Well, I don't like to brag, but I guess it was pretty awesome. You're real good at this whole fighting bad guys thing, dude. Tell you what, I know there's a real nasty bad guy not far from here. Follow me, let's see if you can beat him. Sure, it couldn't hurt to try, let's go. From day nine to day 10, I followed the fungus thrower into the bamboo jungle until we reached a clearing. There, a freaky frozen zombie was waiting. Yikes, that thing seems unpleasant, but a promise is a promise. I ran in and unleashed a lightning strike against the frozen zombie, but it didn't seem to do anything other than annoy this particularly frosty member of the living dead. The frozen zombie chased me, and all I could do was run away as fast as I could. When I'd managed to lose the frozen zombie, I rendezvoused with the fungus thrower again. I'm really sorry for letting you down on this one, man, but I just don't think I'm strong enough to take down that frozen zombie yet. It's chill, dude. You did your best, and that's what matters. Tell you what, why don't you come and stay at my base while I get stronger? You seem like a cool guy. I'd love to hang out with you some more. <laughs> oh, you're too sweet, man. Let's do it. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with the fungus thrower. It was exciting to have another friend added to my team. Fungus thrower left to relax while I built a new room for him, along with the rooms for me and the wind collar. What do you think, buddy? This looks awesome, Zozo. I can't wait to hang out here. And hey, I got a little restless while you were building the bedroom, so I built a couple of upgrades of my own. Go take a look. The upgrades that the fungus thrower had created were truly awesome. He'd made a beautiful path connecting all the buildings and a storage room for the base with a furnace that I could use to smelt and forge metal. Say, that gives me an idea. I searched until I found a cave that might contain some valuable materials, and sure enough, right at the entrance, I found a rich vein of iron ore. I mined and collected a bunch of it before going back to my base. Once I was there, I used my furnace to smelt the ore into ingots. Then I made a full set of iron tools. I still had a little left over, so I used that to make an iron helmet and a chest plate. This looks awesome, so I've got shelter and weaponry covered. Now, I need to make sure my food sources are sustainable too. I built a small chicken farm on my base and herded a few chickens inside so I'd never run out of eggs or yummy chicken. From day 13 to day 15, I spoke to my mentor, the wind caller, and asked him if he knew any other ways I could train and get stronger. A very good question, Zozo. To become a better fighter, you need to fight and hone your battle tactics. I've heard reports of another one of those sinister whisperers wandering around the bamboo jungle. Go out there and defeat it to grow your strength. Because everything Windcaller had said so far hadn't led me astray, I followed his advice and went out to the bamboo jungle again. I searched until I found the whisperer that Windcaller had told me about. I will destroy you in the name of Mike. Not if I destroy you first, whisperer. 
With my new iron sword, it wasn't hard to battle the Whisperer into submission. When the Whisperer was destroyed, it dropped a potion of strength onto the ground. Perfect timing! I was starting to feel super thirsty. I picked up the potion of strength and drank it, and I felt the change immediately. I started to get bigger, stronger, and my heart grew to 30. The Windcaller was right. Fighting that Whisperer did make me stronger. From day 16 to day 19, I continued exploring the overworld until I came upon the Cypress Swamplands. It was a strange, mystical place, and the more I wandered around, the more I got the sense that something important was waiting for me here. And that feeling proved to be right when I came upon an ancient book of secrets laying around. I decided that it might be worth reading, so I flipped through until I found a section called How to Defeat Squall Golems. Wow, that's appropriate. A section read, The stony flesh of a squall golem may seem impenetrable. Even diamond swords and the strongest of arrows just seem to bounce off. But if one could obtain a sword of netherite, then the playing field would be evened. A netherite sword? I need to get my hands on one of those then. My moment of victory was interrupted by a pair of whisperers suddenly appearing and wandering towards me. They must have come here to stop me from reading this book of secrets. You overgrown weeds can't scare me. With my lightning strikes and energy blasts, the three whispers were destroyed for good. From day 20 to day 22, knowing that I needed a netherite sword to truly defeat Mike the Squall Golem, I went back to the mining cave looking for more material. Sadly, I couldn't find any diamonds or netherite down there, just more iron ore. I mined a bunch of it and went back to my base where I smelted it into ingots and made myself the rest of my iron armor. If you can't invest in your attacks, you might as well invest in your defense. My recent increase in strength reminded me of an old, unsettled score. I needed to defeat the frozen zombie for my friend the Fungus Thrower. Time to send that zombie to its eternal resting place. I returned to the bamboo jungle and hunted down the frozen zombie that had given me trouble all those days ago. With my iron sword, I was able to defeat the nasty undead once and for all. It probably won't be long before I'm strong enough to take on Mike and win. I wouldn't be so sure, weakling. I turned and saw Mike himself was standing right behind me. I wanted to run, but this time I stood my ground. I'm not scared of you anymore, Mike. I know the secret. I just need to get my hands on a netherite sword. I'm a champion of the Order of the Shield. <laughs> What's so funny? You think you're the first champion. You think you're the only one who knows about netherite swords. I've destroyed a hundred foolish champions like you, and you'll make it a hundred and one. Mike punched me, taking off a frightening number of hearts. All I could do was run for my life. I was clearly still not strong enough to face him yet. From day 23 to day 26, I went back to my base and informed the fungus thrower that I defeated the frozen zombie of the bamboo forest. Way to go, Zozo! You've no doubt achieved a whole new level of strength from that battle! And I plan to get even stronger now that I was able to fulfill my promise to you. Oh yeah, buddy! I know you can! I knew that I needed stronger materials in my inventory if I really wanted to work my way up to that netherite sword, so I went digging for more iron in my mining cave. While there were still no diamonds to be found, the iron ore was plentiful. I helped myself to as much of the iron as I could carry and smelted a bunch of it down into some more ingots. I made a temporary smelting location to smelt the iron while I mined. I already had a set of iron tools and armor, so out of all the iron, I made an anvil so we can repair our gear when it loses durability. My pickaxe can be the first candidate to get repaired. Once I was done mining, I went above ground to my base where Windcaller was waiting for me. Zozo, I've given the base a new addition that will be sure to keep you safe while you build up your strength. That sure is nice of you. Consider it my thanks for all the hard work you've put in so far. I went to see what the Windcaller had added to the base and found a well-constructed security bunker to hide in, in case of invasion. This looks like it will come in handy. From day 27 to day 31, I was far away from the base, exploring the Cypress Swamplands when I had first learned about the existence of netherite swords. If I remember my last visit correctly, I also defeated a couple of whisperers while I was here. The whole area looked totally peaceful now, without any of Mike's minions to be seen. As I was taking in the pleasant vibes, I was approached by a kindly Fletcher, who seemed rather happy that the Swamplands were free of baddies. Wow, wee zowie! You must be Zozo the Electric Tiger! I heard you took down those whisperers some days ago. That's me. I'm the toughest and only electric tiger around. That's wicked awesome. It's good to know that there are people out there looking for strength who are also nice and willing to stand up for the weak. I will do my best to help those in need. I heard there were some other whisperers skulking around and looking to challenge you. They must really want to stand up for that Mike guy. I can take them. Do you know where they are? 
Not right now, but they'd probably hunt me down and try to beat me up if they knew I told you that. Then they'd be right here in the swamp again. I know, what if you stayed at my base for a while? At least until I have my match with Mike. That way, I can protect you. The Fletcher agreed, and together we went back to my base where I added a base extension. I made a small outdoors library with a few couches to have a nice cozy place to relax. The books that I put on the shelves would teach me strategies and techniques for winning battles. Because knowledge is power. Later, I was approached by Windcaller, who had some bad news. Zozo, we have to come with you again. Mike's minions have discovered the Order of the Shield and are attacking its members. We need to check on the Illusioner before he could be next. Oh no, that sounds serious. Let's go. From day 32 to day 35, Windcaller and I crossed the Baobab Savannah to reach the Illusioner's shack. When we found the place, it was too late. The shack was under attack by a Whisperer, and the Illusioner was desperately fighting for his life. You Order of the Shield fools can't win. Mike makes right. The saying is might makes right. What you said is just silly. You're calling us silly? Just for that, you're going to die. The Whisperer destroyed the Illusioner right before our eyes. You monsters. Talk about pathetic. Is this all the Order of the Shield is made of? You're dead wrong. I'm Zozo, the Electric Tiger. I am the champion, and I'll show you how strong I am. I called down a lightning strike, getting the Whisperer's attention and dealing a bunch of damage in the process. With a few swings of my iron sword, I made that Whisperer pay for what it did to the Illusioner. More Whisperers emerged from the edges. I was so angry, I didn't even need to use my energy blasts to bring the pain and take them all down. When the battle was over, Windcaller and I planned what our next move would be. We need to be on the lookout for any other mobs that are working for Mike. Curse him. We were too late to save the Illusioner from his rampage. We'll keep an eye out for the other surviving members of the Order of the Shield, and once we're together, we'll help you become the strongest champion you can be. From day 36 to day 39, I returned to the bamboo jungle so I could practice all my most powerful fighting moves in a safe place where none of my friends would get hurt. I was tossing around energy blasts when I blasted away some bamboo and found an iron golem hiding nearby. Whoa, easy with those blasts. You could knock somebody out with those. My apologies, I didn't know you were here. Sometimes I don't know my own strength. Oh no, it's okay. I actually have been searching for someone strong enough to defeat the ruthless roaming ravager. If it's a worthy opponent that gives me a chance to test my skills, then I'm 100% game. Where is this ravager anyway? I'll show the way, almighty electric tiger. I was brought to another part of the bamboo forest where the ruthless roaming ravager was running around. It was my time to bring that bad boy down. I fired some energy blasts from my paws, and the Ravager responded by jumping over to me and making a few attacks. I countered with my iron sword. The battle raged on for a while, but I knew from the start I would come out on top. And I was right. I returned to the Iron Golem to tell him that I had successfully defeated that rascally Ravager. Ha! Huh, you really are one tough tiger. That's for sure. From day 40 to day 43, I was in the base and decided to see how the fungus thrower was doing. It looked like he had been hard at work decorating the base with all sorts of tiger-patterned banners and paintings. This base looks absolutely awesome now. Good job, fungus. I'm glad you like it. I was just sprucing the place up in preparation for the pigs I invited over. You invited pigs? Yep, I invited some pigs because I thought they might oink joy themselves here. That's a bad pun, but not a bad idea. I say yes. Hamtastic! <laughs> I mean, fantastic! The pigs that Fungus Thrower invited arrived soon after and were the life of the party. I even got to train my defenses against their classic pig pile technique. After entertaining our fine piggy guests for a while, I went for a walk out in the base and ran into Flusher. Everything all right, Fletcher? I'm worried about my home back in the Cypress Swamplands. Do you think you could go check on it just to be safe? Sure, buddy. It's the least I can do for a friend. From day 44 to day 49, I went back to the Cypress Swamplands like Fletcher wanted me to. I was expecting there might be a few whispers milling about, but I never imagined that I'd see Mike himself. What up, Tiger? Ready to take another shot at the big man? Mike, this should be between you and me. What you did to the Order of the Shield was unforgivable. Nah, no way. I've been beefing with those bozos since long before you showed up. And if you're the chosen champion they kept talking about, then I had to take them down before you become any stronger. So you did it because you're afraid I'll get stronger than you? Well, now you've made sure it'll happen. I will beat you, Mike, one of these days. 
You want to make this personal, huh? All right, let's make it personal. See if you can take on my man, the Piglin Brute. To my surprise, Mike ran off and stuck me fighting with one big mean mob that he called the Piglin Brute. It sure did live up to its name. I'm about to show you why they call me the Piglin Brute. Because I'm brutal. Yeah, I already got that. Put up your dukes, electric tiger. He slammed me with an attack that was definitely brutal. But thankfully, my iron helmet was able to soak up some of the damage. I traded blows using my sword and started to wear him down. But the knockback of his attacks was giving me some trouble. This will be a tough fight. From day 50 to day 53, I had started to use my energy blast to continue to deal damage to the piglin brute. He didn't show much signs of tiring, but then again, neither did I. I can see why the Order of the Shield was impressed by you, but you can't really be the champion who will defeat Mike because I'm about to take you down. Wouldn't bet on it, brute. I launched a couple of strikes at the brute, then I hit him with my sword and knocked him off balance so I could defeat him with some classic Electric Tiger Energy Blast. Bye bye, brute. You were my biggest and meanest opponent yet, but I've won this round. The piglin brute disappeared, and I soon found an item that he dropped. It was a map leading to Mike's Fight Club. This is quite a discovery. I didn't know whether Mike expected me to find this or not, but either way, this meant that I could go to his base whenever I wanted. From day 54 to day 57, I cleared the Cypress Swamplands of all remaining hostile mobs so that Fletcher wouldn't have to worry anymore. The last one in the area was especially tough, a Vindicator who could take a lot of hits from my iron sword. I really had to stay on my guard the whole fight, relying on my new combat strategies that I had been practicing. Sure enough, I was able to win with plenty of hearts to spare. The Vindicator even dropped a Netherite ingot, which was the first step to the Netherite sword that I'd need to defeat Mike. I quickly returned to the base to tell Fletcher the good news. So, the Swamplands are safe? They sure are. You mean that you found another right ingot just like that? I sure did. That's some kind of coincidence, huh? It's no coincidence. It's a sign. You were meant to be the champion of the Order of the Shield. It's your destiny. Well, in that case, I better make the most of this chance and get some diamonds so we can eventually make a netherite sword. You can do it, Zozo. From day 58 to day 62, I made a much needed expansion to the chicken farm so that it could hold more livestock. It was just in time too, because I was able to round up more chickens for food. An electric tiger's gotta eat to keep his energy up, and delicious chicken tenders are what's on the menu. Next, I delved down to the mining cave to have another look for the diamonds I would need to craft a diamond sword. I had to explore pretty deep, but soon enough, I managed to get my pickaxe into some diamonds. There's many diamonds here. I might believe in destiny after all. I mined for a while and found more than enough diamonds to make the diamond sword, which I planned on using as the foundation for the netherite sword I'd be making later. I used the rest of the diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe and a full set of diamond armor for myself. Once I was satisfied with the amount of diamonds I had amassed, I returned to the surface of the base and met up with Windcaller. Hey, Windcaller, I've crafted a diamond sword. That's excellent, Zozo. We should celebrate in the brand new super amazing party room that I just built. Oh, wow, no way. A party room. I love parties. While I had been down in the mines, Windcaller had given the base its most exciting feature yet, a decorated room for hosting parties. I tried out the dance floor and had a really good time. From day 63 to day 66, I was hanging out at the base with Fungus Thrower, discussing ways for me to become even stronger. If I could train in a new location, maybe I'd be able to discover some new fighting moves. I actually know just the place. If you train in the harsh sunlight of the desert, you'll increase your strength in no time. How do I find the desert? I'll show you the way on your map. The Fungus Thrower marked the desert as a location on the map I received from the Fallen Piglin Brute. It looked like it was on the way to the biome where Mike's Fight Club could be found. I should get used to that path while I'm out there. I went to the desert and felt the sun beating down on me. This would be a good place to train, and I was in the mood for a fight with a scary opponent. Across the dunes, I saw one scary looking wither skeleton. I moved towards him with my sword drawn, ready for battle. Hey you, wanna fight Zozo the Electric Tiger? No thank you, I don't wanna fight. Especially not a tough customer like you. Okay, I can respect that, we won't fight. Did you think just because I'm scary looking that I'd wanna fight? You really shouldn't judge people by their outward appearances. Yeah, that was my bad. I'm very sorry about that, friend. Lesson learned. It happens to me a lot, I'm afraid. 
Just the other day, a Zoglin tried to pick a fight with me. I told him, no, wait for a strong person who wants to fight. Well, if that Zoglin wants a fight, I'll fight him. I came here to train anyway. From day 67 to day 70, the friendly wither skeleton brought me to meet the Zoglin, a dangerous opponent who was also looking for a challenging fight. The Zoglin agreed to fight me one on one so we could test each other's strength. Before the fight began, the wither skeleton took me aside so we could have a quick discussion. Are you sure you can win, Zozo? I didn't mean to put you in danger. I think I've got a chance, but thanks for being concerned. Now, thank you for fighting this battle for me. That's what a strong person does. Now I'm gonna go kick some Zoglin butt. The fight between myself and the Zoglin was off to an exciting start when the Zoglin charged straight at me. I dodged his powerful tusks and hit with my sword while his back was turned. The Zoglin countered by hitting me with his tusks. I lost a few hearts, but I was still in the fight. I fired some energy blasts and used my signature lightning strike to deliver the last blow, defeating the Zoglin. Zozo, you did it! I am the Electric Tiger Zozo! Remember the name! From day 71 to day 74, I had completely left the desert behind and was traveling through a new biome, the Eroded Badlands. According to the Piglin Brutes map, this was the same biome where the entrance to Mike's Fight Club could be found. The map also says you can find more of my Zozo videos by searching ZO, ZO in the YouTube search bar. You should try it out! I followed the directions on the map further into the eroded badlands and I could see Mike's fight club in the distance. Just you wait, Mike. I'll fight you one of these days. I heard that, Zozo. Suddenly, Mike was right next to me and he was looking as strong as ever. You shouldn't have said that, Sparkplug. Now I'm gonna give you a taste of my super special punch, the Mike Spike. Oh no, I forgot that today is one of those days. Mike Spike! He punched me and my heart started to deplete. Thank goodness I was wearing diamond armor. I drew my diamond sword and swung at him, but the damage it did was really low. You're still weak, kitty cat. No way. Well, I need a netherite sword to even stand a chance. I ran away from the fight, retracing my steps through the eroded badlands. I still wasn't strong enough to beat him. From day 75 to day 78, I followed the map home to my base and went directly into the bunker to work out. Somehow, I couldn't find the energy to train, probably because I was disappointed that I had to run away from Mike. Mike was the strongest in the world, and I still didn't have the netherite sword I would need to actually challenge him. From what he said before, even that might not be enough. Cheer up, Zozo. You have our strength too, so don't give up. It was Windcaller. He had come into the bunker to check on me and raise my spirits. Thanks, Windcaller. I'm feeling like I'm weak today, so I really needed to hear that. Follow me. I'll show you something that might also help. There was now a new watchtower at the front of the base where we could look out at the Baobab Savannah from. All of a sudden, I feel a whole lot better, Windcaller. Now I remember what I'm fighting for. You are the champion, Electric Tiger Zozo. Don't forget it. Now that I was feeling better, I went to go visit Fletcher. Hey there, Fletcher. Zozo, I got you this special magic apple to help make you strong enough to face Mike. Well, an apple a day, as they say. I scarfed down the apple and began to grow into an even bigger electric tiger with 60 hearts. In addition to bigger damage and more health, I could also perform a special whirlwind attack. Mike won't know what hit him. From day 79 to day 84, I was feeling strong and decided to go back to the eroded badlands. This time, there was no sign of Mike, so I fought some skeletons to test my newfound strength. I wanted to prove to myself that I had what it takes to become the strongest. A nearby weaponsmith saw me defeat those mobs and thought that I was pretty cool, so he offered to upgrade my weapons. This is my chance to get a netherite sword. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just give me your diamond sword and your netherite ingots and I'll take care of the rest. I gave the weaponsmith what he needed and waited in anticipation for him to finish my super cool netherite sword. It didn't take him that long and I could tell just by swinging it that this netherite sword was the most powerful weapon that I'd ever had. Thank you, weaponsmith. I promise to use what you've given me for the side of justice. Go on and save the world. Every weaponsmith dreams of creating a hero's weapon. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to the base to show the others that I had obtained the netherite sword and found that it was being attacked by whisperers. So this is where you ran away to, coward. We're gonna make you feel real silly for leaving Mike in the middle of a fight. I battled the whisperers with all my might, testing the edge of my netherite sword. These minions had given me trouble in the past, but now I was so much stronger than them that they were barely a threat. I easily defended the base and prevented any further damage to the structures. 
Oh man, this guy is actually way too strong. Maybe I should leave this one to Mike. He'll know how to win. Intimidated by my strength, the Whisperer stopped fighting. It was now their turn to run away. Serves you right for trying to mess with my friends. You'll have to deal with this electric tiger now. I chased the Whisperers through the Baobab Savannah until my base was far away. Never come back! A villager who saw me bravely face off against Mike's henchmen came over to cheer me on. You're the electric tiger, the second strongest being in the world. Soon to be the most strongest or first strongest, whichever sounds better. Do you think you can spare some of your strength and give me a hand building a bridge over the river? Sure thing, villager. I used the materials the villager gave me to finish building the bridge across the river. Thanks, Sozo. Only a truly strong hero could do something like that. From day 90 to day 94, I continued onward across the desert and through the eroded badlands until I saw on the map I was getting close to Mike's arena. I could see one of the whisperers who had attacked my base lingering nearby, and I drew my netherite sword in preparation for a battle. I'm here to see Mike. I'm going to challenge him for the title of strongest being in the world. Oh no you didn't! You're gonna need to get this guy first! He's the second strongest in the whole world! An armored pillager showed up, taking the place of the Whisperer as my opponent. I've heard people say that you're the second strongest in the world. Not true, because that's me. I've never beaten Mike, but I'll beat anyone who isn't Mike. You won't beat me. I'll take your title, then I'll take on Mike. Then bring it on, Zozo the Electric Tiger. The armored villager waited for me to make the first move, which I did using my netherite sword. He blocked the attack and countered with a strike from his own weapon. I lost quite a few hearts and had to dodge back to avoid the worst of his attacks. I used my energy blast to keep him at a distance, but his armor was as tough as mine. You're pretty strong, pillager. Are you ready to give up and run away? No way. I'll never back down from a fight again. From day 95 to day 97, I continued to battle against the armored pillager, utilizing all my specially trained techniques to try and gain an advantage. Have another lightning strike. I can handle your lightning strikes all the live long day, Zozo. We'll see about that. I circled around the armored pillager with my whirlwind attack and delivered sword strikes wherever I could. I was still having trouble cracking the second strongest fighter's armor, but I figured I could soften him up for a lightning strike if I just kept attacking. With my whirlwind active, I spun around and unleashed my lightning strike. With that attack, the pillager surrendered. The electric tiger defeated the armored pillager and became the true second strongest in the world. No, I couldn't achieve my dream of becoming the strongest in the world. Why did you want to become the strongest so bad? I'm doing it to protect my friends and myself from Mike. It started that way for me too, but when I realized I would never win, I became his follower. All the people who believed in me before became sad and stopped being my friends, but they went on to form the Order of the Shield. Wait, you were the original champion. No, I was just the guy who tried to be a champion before there was a champion. You've got to be better than me, Zozo. I will, Armored Pillager. I'll defeat Mike and become the strongest in the world, once and for all. On day 98, I went back to the base to tell everyone that I would soon be facing off against Mike for the ultimate title. I went to visit Windcaller first, who was standing at the top of the watchtower. Thanks to the strength you gave me at the start, I was able to become the champion that you always thought I could be. It was like I said long ago. My strength was the foundation, but you built it into something better and made it your own. Thank you for believing in me. Here is a bit more of my strength in the form of a potion. Drink it before you go into battle. Next, I met with Fletcher outside of the chicken farm. I wanted to assure him that once I was the strongest, I would use my strength to protect all of the biomes from evil. Very soon, the world will be safe. I'm glad I was able to help your quest for strength, Zozo. You gave me what I needed when I needed it most, and I'm so grateful that I was able to meet you. Make the most of your magic powers. The special techniques will be the key to victory. After Fletcher, there was only one last friend to thank, the fungus thrower who was chilling in the party room. This room is the best room, other than a mushroom, of course. <laughs> That's a fungus. I look forward to hanging out after I beat Mike once and for all. It'll be a big celebration. On day 99, I made my way back to the eroded badlands and saw the first glimpses of Mike's base. I approached, and there were the whisperers waiting to stand in the way. Move aside, small fry. I'm here for Mike. You guys don't need to be involved. The whisperers bolted for the hills, and I ran straight into Mike's base. On day 100, I walked into Mike's fight club with my netherite sword drawn. 
Mike, I'm here to fight. The big golem himself, Mike, appeared before me in order to fight. Zozo the Electric Tiger, you fought all the other strong people in the world, and now you think you can steal my crown. I do. I'm gonna make sure that you are put down for the count. Lots of people have said that to me before, and I've beaten them all. I didn't get to be the strongest because I made excuses. I just kept fighting and winning. But you didn't fight the Whisperers when they started going after the Order of the Shield. You didn't want a champion to fight you. I don't care what those weaklings do or what fights they get into. All that matters is the fight between me and you. That's how it's always been, destined champion. Let's do this in a place worthy of this showdown. Mike left, and I ran after him. He turned into his fighting arena. I followed him in when he hit at the entrance and slammed his golem fist into my body. It was the Mike Spike, his signature opening move. I drew my netherite sword and dealt some real damage to him for the first time. I followed up with a whirlwind and a lightning strike. Mike threw me across the fight club. Then he jumped and slammed onto me, dealing a lot of damage. He tried to attack again, but I hit him with an energy blast. He caught him off guard, and I was able to land a bunch of other energy blasts after. Then I remembered to drink up the strength potion Windcaller gave me. I felt much stronger now. As we stood there, swinging away at each other, hit after hit, I was wearing the golem down. Eventually, one of us fell. Mike actually dropped. Yes, Zozo the Electric Tiger wins. I had completed the 100-day challenge to defeat the strongest being in the world. I had won.